Yes. So, I what do we got next? NFL or baseball? We can talk a little bit of NFL. A little bit of stuff happening. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the NFL because the NFL is always seems like the hottest sport. Not much um, happened. Some trades, some free agents uh, signing places. Kirk Cousins going to the Vikings. Kirk yeah. Cousins going let's, to the Vikings. Let's, let's talk about that real quick. Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about the Vikings uh, with Case Keenum going to the Chiefs. Makes no and sense. And now, um, did he go to the Chiefs? Is that where the? Yeah, I think he went to the Chiefs, right? I'm pretty sure it was the Chiefs. I don't know. You asked the wrong person. All right, let's let's uh, ask uh, our fans. But I think first our fans, off, let's, a lot of our fans are football though. guys. But first off, let's just start with this. Does, um, Keenum going or not Keenum? Does I just said his cousins? Name. Does Broncos. cousins going? Broncos. He went to the Broncos. Yeah, he went to oh, the Broncos. That's what I thought. Does Kirk Cousins, who got the biggest contract in history, history. to go to the Vikings, is that making them a better team? Yes, well, that's what Aaron just Aaron just asked: Is he worth? Is Kirk worth the contract? Heck no. And uh, what has Kirk Cousins done? He hasn't in his done career anything that, like, in the playoffs. Makes you comfortable. He, he didn't make the playoffs last year. What I like about Kirk Cousins being in the division with the Cowboys was that um, he was feisty. He he made his team more competitive. He wasn't the greatest quarterback. But he was better than average. He's getting paid like the best he's quarterback. Getting, he's getting paid now like a really top quarterback. He's getting paid I, I like him. The guy, the, he, he's, he's getting better and better every year. That's why Minnesota signed him. Because they saw the same thing. They saw he kept improving every year, proving the doubters wrong, making that Washington Redskins team, which stunk, making them at least competitive. You know, And even after they got rid of Deshaun Jackson and some of his top targets, he still made that team competitive. So... Now putting him to Minnesota with all those weapons, I you know I think that he's going to play very well, especially when you got a defense. But like Minnesota. is the team better now with Cousins than it was with Keenum last year? Um, slightly. Who won a playoff game? I'm going to say slightly better. Keenum played his butt off for his first year. Maybe Minnesota just didn't believe that Keenum was the real deal, or they would have re-signed him. It's funny how you you go from having a quarterback who's won a playoff game to yeah. going to Kirk Cousins who didn't even make the playoffs. And thinking that that's going to turn your team around? Yeah, I didn't like it very much. I didn't like the move with Case Keenum leaving and them bringing in. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. Really I think like you, you should have kept that team together and kept Keenum because you know the team supported him. I mean, no one thought Keenum was going to play that well yep. um, going into last year. And he became a really good quarterback, carried that team. But I listen, if Minnesota. The Vikings lost all three quarterbacks. But think about all the time. If, the Vikings, if the Vikings thought. They knew Keenum better than anybody. If they thought it was worth getting Cousins and letting Keenum go, then who are we to say, you know, they made the made a bad move, right? I think Kirk Cousins is going to play very well um, with that Minnesota team. I do. Because I think they, they don't need to rely on, on the quarterback. Their defense is really good. They got talent in other positions. I think he just needs to be just like Keenum. Manage that team. Don't make a lot of mistakes. Now what about the Jets? moving up in the draft to pick a quarterback. Where did the Jets look? Even though they picked up um, the other Vikings quarterback, Bridgewater. 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 I think the Jets picked up Bridgewater as a safety net, right? I like Bridgewater, though. He hasn't had a chance to play since he got hurt. Here's why I think the Jets picked him up. I think the Jets picked him up because I think they're still going to go out and get a quarterback in the draft. But just for this year, they picked up Bridgewater just to play. So... You know, whoever they pick up in the draft doesn't have to be, right? They don't have to have, you know, the pressure of starting right away. They can take a year or two, kind of groom the quarterback, whoever they're thinking about picking up. But is is the trade worth moving up three spots? The Jets gave up a lot just to move up three spots. They traded what, three think, draft picks? I don't think it was worth it. There's, I think, they're, they're still going to draft the quarterback, even if it was Rosen or whoever that uh, six best. best I mean, if you're draft. looking at... Who made the trade? The Colts made the trade. They yep. don't need a quarterback. So they, they traded down oh, they three picks smart. and got... I mean, so if you're looking at it from the Jets' standpoint, you're like, okay, they're already not going to draft a quarterback. So do we really have to worry about the Colts? I think they were more worried about the four and five. Who's Who has the fourth and the fifth pick right the now? The Browns have four. The Browns have the first and the fourth. And the fourth. Yeah. So why would the Browns... Do you think the Browns are going to pick up another quarterback? Well, here's why. Here's why this is smart. Not? Because the Browns could have went with Barkley one. Right. This is think about it. 
Browns could have said, I'm going to pick a running back first. Why? Because I got the number four pick. And they thought, right, Indianapolis is not going to pick a quarterback. Who's got the second pick? The Giants have the second pick. They They might pick a quarterback. They're probably going to go with a quarterback. Right? So that's where Cleveland said, or the Jets were thinking Cleveland was thinking in that way. So you already lost two quarterbacks, or one. You've only lost one by the second pick. Third pick, you're not going to lose a quarterback. So who the Browns with the fourth pick, they might pick a quarterback. Yeah. Then you have to worry about the the one more pick in that fifth pick. Who who are they gonna pick up? Yeah. So I mean you're losing three draft picks. Three second rounders. Two this year and one next year. That's what the Jets have to do. Second round picks are pretty Yeah, man. They're pretty important. important. That's pretty pretty important. important. That's why the Jets have to have Look what the Jets gave up. The Jets gave up the 2018 second round, the 37th overall, which is almost like a late first rounder, mm-hmm. and they gave up the number 49th overall and 2019 second round pick. So the Jets got this, you know, they moved up to number the third overall pick, and they Does gave up all of picks? that. It's like they gave up three picks. Is it worth it? Let me tell you, the Jets better be right on this pick, or New York fans are going to go nuts. They yeah. better have someone like, they must, They better be like the Eagles and make sure the quarterback they picked was exactly the same reason, because the Eagles did the same thing. Because I'm not a big fan of Sam Darnold or what's the other Josh one? Josh Rosen. Not Josh Rosen. I'm not a big fan of either of them. I mean, cool, they have the size, they have the speed, they have this, but like, seeing them play in college and not having good seasons, you're like, I don't know. They just didn't do it there. Why? Why? What makes them think that putting them on the NFL team is going to make them a star? And the Jets—you got guys like Baker Mayfield and—and and the funny thing, the Jets and, also uh, re-signed well, Josh, Josh McCown, which you yeah, were yeah, like, it's a fantastic, bro. and he played, played well last year. I mean, he's a good backup. I think they have two solid quarterbacks now. Yeah. So will they pick quarterback at three? Yeah, no doubt. If they don't, I mean, they will. Or will if they, they look don't, to, or will they look to get Barkley? If the Giants don't pick. If the Barkley, Giants don't if, pick if Barkley, Barkley, if Barkley is there Barkley. at number three, if Barkley's there at number three, and the Jets don't pick him, then if the Browns don't pick Barkley, then the Giants are going to pick Barkley. You think? I, I think, think so. I think I think Barkley's going one or two, and if Browns don't get Barkley, definitely the Giants. Giants definitely need one back. Listen, there's so many good quarterbacks in this draft. I just don't understand why. The you better have a no-brainer. Because you have Lamar Jackson, you have Baker Mayfield. I'm like, those two guys are, they're pretty solid. I, yeah. I like them both, so. Well, time will tell, and it will be a lot of fun to see uh, what's going to happen once the draft comes and who's going to pick where. So, update on the Arnold Palmer Invitational. McElroy has gone nuts. Third birdie in a row. Might have been an eagle because he chipped off the green and made it. And Tiger is now six back and officially out as McElroy has taken control of this tournament and looking to run away with it. So, well, folks, what do we got left as we uh, Let's call this this quickie episode? Uh, quick quick episode this Sunday. Um, quick episode. It came on a little bit earlier than normal, uh, about an hour, hour and a half than normal. So for those that tune in later, sorry that we uh, had short notice. And We'll be back next week, I believe, at the normally uh, scheduled time. Maybe. We should be. We'll never know, so stay we're tuned. Different people yeah. around here. Around here, we're busy and things happen. So what do we have to end the episode? We're going Major League Baseball. Listen, let's just go real quick. We're gonna we're not going to talk about everything baseball. We're going to go straight into the AL East. We're going to get we're gonna break down the AL East. We're going to go best team, sleeper team, and obviously the worst team. So... And then obviously let's break it down a little bit more. We got about 10, 15 minutes. So let's dive deep into this real quick. I mean, let's start off with the best team. Who do we think in a crowded AL East is the best team right now going forward to start the season? Angel? You guys will like this. It's the Yankees. The Yankees are the best team in the AL East, especially picking up Stanton. Uh, That was a steal for almost every team. Like every team's probably hating that they didn't go out and stand and the Yankees got them. But yeah, that that right there just makes it just a whole step ahead of uh, uh, the next team, especially the Red Sox. Even though the Red Sox have a really good team, 
but the Yankees are one step ahead with that stand, and especially knowing that he won the MVP. They had Judge with 50 home runs. Sanchez, they know, could hit 40 home runs. So, and their pitching is pretty good. I like Severino. Tanaka is okay. Tanaka Gray. Sonny Gray could be good again. If Sonny Gray could be like the way he was when he was oh, first up in the big leagues, Cy Young Award uh, candidate almost all the time, he could definitely be an impact for the Yankees. For so sure. it's definitely the Yankees for me. For sure. I'm um, a Super Yankee fan, so what do you think, Joe? The best team right now? We, we already broke this down a couple weeks ago. Listen, I'm a, I, I break it down by the best pitching, the best hitting, and the best bullpen. Is there anything else I should add there? Don't really care about defense. Who's the best pitcher, pitching staff? You best pitching staff Sox goes to the Red Sox. The Red Sox have the best pitching staff. The best lineup is a toss-up, but I think the Yankees have the best lineup compared so. to the Could Red Sox. Use. I mean, yeah. they have Betts. They have yeah. Bogart, who underperformed last year. Who ben could Attendee. be better? They have Ben Attendee who played, played, really played good, good yeah, last played year. Really good for his first full year. Um, Speaking of JD Martinez, JD Martinez, yeah, JD Martinez helps, helps, helps a lot, but a he's lot. not as good as Stanton is. No. When you had an MVP, like a fifty home run don't, guy, don't sleep with another how many home runs did, did JD, JD Martinez, Martinez had was forty something? Was third in the yeah. MLB in home runs was, behind Judge and Stanton. Yeah, he he was up there. So don't don't take that and lightly. I'm not hit about thirty in the second half of the season. So yeah, he he was he was tremendous. He, if he if he hits like last year, he'll definitely um he'll be a great addition to that Red Sox team. Takes pressure off of the other guy. That's why I think I think the Red Sox moved their lineup way too much last year. Bogarts they were moving Bogarts and, and Bogarts was the main one that I thought they they moved away too much. They needed to make Bogart the number three batter, right? And and they were moving from third to sixth to fifth, and I just I thought they were just I think. He got out of his out of his rhythm last year. He didn't have a great year. And I think he underperformed last year. Oh, wait, I didn't finish. Go ahead. Um, I think the Yankees have the best lineup, and then I think the Yankees have the best bullpen, obviously. Yeah. So that's why I think out of the three categories, the Yankees have won two out of three of them. So that's why I think they're the best team. I just don't think that because I like them. Aaron, Aaron's a Tampa Bay Rays fan since he's from Valrico, Tampa. And... Uh, he says he's definitely the Yankees. He just threw up in his mouth saying that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you obviously agree that the Yankees are the best team. I, I do. I think I think what what the Yankees did, the run that they had last year, um, really elevated the team more from a confident level. Uh, I think the Red Sox and the Yankees are neck and neck. I think it's going to be a close race all the way through because I think the Red Sox have a chip on their shoulder. Everybody's talking about the Yankees. They're quietly just doing what they're going to do. They were the division winners last year, and I'm sure they feel disrespected by all this Yankee talk. So, you know, it's going to be important to see who comes out hot. The, the Red Sox still have a great bullpen and a great closer, great starting pitching. You know, the teams that we always said in the East, I think most of the teams in the East are going to be the same as it comes to the end of the year. But I think the Yankees have a slight edge because I do think San Marino is getting better. And he had a phenomenal year. He was a Cy Young candidate. They they all they gave, they announced that he will be the starting pitcher this year, uh, opening day starter, not Tanaka or anybody else, which says a lot about Severino and what they're seeing in him and his leadership. He's starting to step up. He wants to be the best pitcher in baseball. And obviously the addition of Stanton already to that crazy lineup. You have Judge now into his second year. You have right Sanchez going into his second full year. You got these young kids who are now going to be pretty much now having a lot more confidence. They know what they can do. And you, if you have a healthy bird and you have the team stay healthy, because that's ultimately what's going to determine either team. If any of these teams have too many injuries, the other team will obviously take the lead. So these teams can stay healthy. Um, they're going to be neck and neck. The sleeper in the division, to me, you can, have, you, you can have one of two. I think Toronto and Baltimore can both be sleepers because I think they have decent enough pitching. Toronto has a good closer, right? Toronto has a really good closer. Baltimore closer starting, Britain is starting off on a DL, so if he was healthy, they'd have another good closer. And both teams can hit. So, yeah. you, know, it, it, you know, I believe that either team can come out of nowhere and play very well. So um, they either one of those can be a sleepers. I think Tampa has, has given up a lot. 
um, traded players. They've still got a lot of talent, but I think Tampa's definitely going to make them. Yeah, yeah just drop them the, back. They're the worst team going yeah. into the year. They kind of pulled, they, they kind of pulled like a little bit of a Miami Marlins type of feel. Yeah. Just getting rid I of mean, the but guys. they did get good talent back, though. They did get some good prospects back. Especially but, the Giants. I mean, obviously they didn't trade But the Tampa Bay is going to be competitive. They're competitive every year. I mean, we see it, but they still have guys like Denard Spann and um, Kiermaier. They have Kiermaier. They have the other outfielder that they picked up. Um, they signed Carlos Gomez. Carlos, Carlos Gomez. Gomez. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, no, they got talent. The, the, Tampa's always had talent, whether it was young, developing. They got talent. They got arms. That's why it wouldn't surprise me if they stayed, you know, in the contention for a little while. But I think eventually they'll fall back. Last year I thought they would be in more contention than they were. They didn't play as good as I thought last year. Um, so that's why I think they just took a step back um, from this division. So I think um, again it's going to be fun to watch. Anytime you got the Yankees and Red Sox both competing, it makes it makes baseball a lot more fun. It makes the division more fun. Um, even as a Yankee fan, I just love when they compete and their, their games matter. Um, it's kind of like North Carolina Duke, and, you know, yeah. watching those types of rivalries. It's the best, it's best rivalry fun. ever. Yeah, for sure. All right. So, I think that is it for our quick epi. That was a good yeah. one. That was, a that quick, was our we, QE for we, the week. We made the quick epi. I mean, next week we'll try to have a normal epi, but we've been having some stuff to do. I, I hate having <laughs> stuff to do. Because yeah. I wish we could talk longer. Same. But it's all good. Baseball's coming, right? Baseball's coming closer. Next week, we'll figure out who's going to be in the final eight, eight probably. next yeah. week. Maybe more. Maybe, maybe, maybe final more. four. Maybe final four. Yeah, final maybe four, actually. Whole week. Yeah, final four, because it'll go. You'll have 32 teams left. Thursday and Friday, you'll figure out who makes the Sweet 16. Sweet 16 will be Saturday and Sunday. Next week, we'll figure out by Sunday night, no. we should have an idea who the final eight is, I believe. We'll you know, find out who the rest of the Sweet 16 is today. The Sweet 16 today. is today. We'll they find out, out today. today. And then what? Tuesday? Eight the next will be on Wednesday. Wednesday. We'll probably yeah. find out all the teams. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll probably we'll have the final, final four. We'll go to the final four, four next week. That's true. We might even have the finals. By and then. baseball yeah, starts. Maybe. We're probably like less than or around maybe. 10 days. Ten days? Days? The Yankees are next Thursday. Not this Thursday. The Yankees sent down Andubar and... Oriel, so it's getting close. Yeah, it's getting close to the top top Yankee talent. I think that's why the Yankees also, to me, is the top because they're they're so deep that if they if they need a player, they no longer have to go trade. You know what I mean? If they miss it, you know they need somebody to come to fill in the, a third base or a second base or a shortstop, no problem. They need an outfielder to fill in, no problem. If they need pitching, no problem. They got so much depth that it makes them the favorite. So. Yeah, we'll have, definitely have a lot to talk about um, next week as baseball is right around the corner, um, right? College basketball coming to an end, and obviously the NFL draft is coming closer. And the NBA playoffs is coming. NBA playoffs next month, I think. Next month. Can't so wait. with that, thank you, thank you to everyone who tuned in this week, Facebook and um, YouTube. Thank you for listening, to Instagram, and so on. We appreciate the. Uh, Sorry, the everything has changed. Hopefully more people will watch the YouTube video, though. <laughs> yeah, go to YouTube and subscribe to our video. And again, feedback is always welcome. Topics, we always want to make it interactive. We feel like this is not just a show for us, but a show we all can interact. So for everyone there, thank you very much. Have a fantastic week, and we'll catch up with you guys next Sunday. Yeah, and uh, thanks for being a part of the family, guys. See you next week. Peace. YouTube, you're still watching. Subscribe, hit the button below, you know, like the video, comment, you know, follow us on Instagram. I know it's, I know it's on the bottom of the page. Listen, if you like the video, make sure you guys like it, subscribe, comment below, share the video with your uncle who has the bad breath problem, but he will definitely love the video. So make sure you guys share and keep giving us love and, you know, join the family.